Hello, everyone. Welcome to join Nimo Ten webinar. My name is Robert Lin. I am responsible for secure microcontroller business. Today, we will introduce you step by step of trust zone programming for M two three five one series. We do hope this video can guide you to easily to use Nimo Ten's convenient tools to rapidly develop and secure IoT device application. Let's start now. With the development of the Internet of Things, devices which work alone can communicate each other and exchange information through the Internet, but may suffer data theft or attacks through the Internet. Thus, a secure mechanism is needed to protect devices and messages. The Trust Zone technology can achieve the IoT security requirements. The following will introduce. ARM Trust Zone technology and show the example of how to program Trust Zone on M2351. Computer Firewall isolates the internet to internal and outside the network to protect internal network information from not being attacked by outside the network. The M2351 with Trust Zone technology also partitions microcontroller hardware into secure and non-secure world to protect important secure world information from not being easily stolen or modified by non-secure world. Non-secure world cannot access secure world data easily unless the access is certified by secure world, so the important data which needs protection can be saved in secure world safely. By partitioning hardware into secure and non-secure world, Trust Zone technology can achieve the security requirements. Trust Zone partitions memory map into secure and non-secure. Other resources, including flash, SRAM, and peripherals, can also be partitioned into secure and non-secure. Secure world can access all resources, including flash, SRAM, peripherals, and system registers. Otherwise, non-secure world can only access non-secure resources. In order to partition system security, Memory address security attribution can be configured by IDAU and SAU. The security result is the higher security compared between IDAU and SAU. The security attributes of memory map address can be configured into secure S, non-secure NS, or non-secure callable NSC. Secure code runs in secure memory map. Non-secure code runs in non-secure memory map. Non-secure callable entry function is located at a non-secure callable region. Non-secure code can call secure function by non-secure callable entry function if secure code allows the access authority. In M2351, IDAU partitions a fixed memory map security attribution. The address bit 28 is used to define security. If the bit 28 is zero, it is secure. In flash and SRAM code can be executed. It is non-secure callable. The first 2K bytes of flash is fixed to secure. If the bit 28 is 1, it is non-secure. The system and debug-related registers are not fixed to certain security. They are determin determined by current system state. Users can set their own security attribution configuration. If SAU is disabled, the whole memory map can be set to all secure or non-secure. If SAU is enabled, you can set certain address range security as non-secure or non-secure callable. Other address not being defined is secure. After configuring the security 
attribution, secure program runs in secure memory map, and the non-secure program runs in non-secure memory map. System starts up at secure program. The system can switch between secure and non-secure state through function call. If non-secure code calls secure function, non-secure code calls non-secure code per entry function at first. The first instruction of non-secure code per entry function is SG instruction. It is the entry point where system switches from non-secure state to secure state and then calls secure function. Secure function ends with BXNX instruction and the system returns to non-secure state. If secure code calls non-secure function, secure code uses BLXNX instruction to call non-secure function before switching to non-secure state, the return address will be stored in secure state stack and the error value is set to a special value, then calls non-secure function. Non-secure function ends with BX instruction branches to address error. Error value was set to the special value before, then system switches back to secure state. The following will show trust some programming on M2351. The development environment is Kyo MDK and the Newton New Link debugger. First, uh, this video will introduce how to configure security attribution, including memory map, flash, SRAM, peripherals, and the peripheral interrupts. After setting security attribution, configure related secure and non secure project settings. Compile and download a program, you can observe the state switch between secure and non-secure through debug mode. The following will show trust zone programming on M2351. The development the environment is Kyo MDK and the Newton New Link Debugger. First, this video introduces how to configure security attribution including memory map, flash, SRAM, per peripherals, and the peripheral interrupts. After setting security attribution, configure related secure and non-secure project settings. Compile and download program. You can observe the state switch between secure and non-secure through debug mode. Open M2351 Trust Zone sample code. The Kyle project provides configuration wizard to help user configure security attribution. Click Secure Project. Then user and select the partition m2351.h file. Then select the configuration wizard page. To configure memory map security attribution in secure attribution, you need to control item. Select enable SAU. In enable and set secure non-secure region item, specify the start address and end address and set the region as secure non-secure callable to place non-secure callable entry function. Set the secure flash and SRAN size in peripheral secure attribution configuration item. Configure peripheral security, for example, set UART1 as non-secure. In assign interrupt to secure or non-secure vector item, configure peripheral interrupt security. For example, set UART1 interrupt as non-secure. Configure related secure and non-secure project settings after setting security attribution. Under the secure project, click options for target on device page. Select M2351. On target page, select the software model to secure mode. On link page, 
Edit SCADA file. Specify secure flash SRAM non-secure callable entry function location and import the non-secure callable function library. On debug page, select download and debug tool to Newton New Link Debugger. Under the non-secure project, click Options for Target. On Target page, select Software Model to non-secure mode. On, on Link page, edit SCADA file, specify non-secure flash and SRAM location. If Non-secure code use uses non-secure callable function which is provided by secure code. Add the non-secure callable function library which is just imported in secure project. After compiling and downloading both secure and non-secure code, under the secure project, click Start Debug Section button to execute the secure code. Secure code is executed at first. To add non-secure code under view menu, click symbols window, non-secure and uh, main ns.c and then right click on main and select show code for main to open non-secure code. To observe system state switch, use new vertical tab group function to place secure code in left window and non-secure code in right window. After setting breakpoints in non-secure code, click Run, then code is executed to non-secure code. If user wants to code secure function in non-secure code, non-secure code configures SysTick and enters SysTick interrupt periodically. In SysTick interrupt non-secure code, code secure function, secure LED on. This is secure function Secure LED on. Click wrong, then enter SysTick interrupt and the call secure function. Non secure code will call the corresponding non secure callable entry function. The first instruction of non-secure callable entry function is SG instruction. Then non-secure code can call secure function secure LED on.
Then execute secure function. Secure function ends with BXNX instruction and the system switches back to non-secure state. If user wants to call non-secure function in secure code, secure code also configures SysTick and enters SysTick interrupt periodically. In SysTick interrupt secure, secure code calls non-secure function. Click wrong, then enter SysTick interrupt and call non-secure function non-secure LED on. Secure code saves Secure information and switches to non-secure state with BLXNS instruction. Then execute non-secure function. Non-secure function ends with pop instruction. Get return address value and the system switches back to secure state. Trust zone technology partitions microcontroller system hardware into secure and non-secure. Non-secure cannot access secure arbitrarily, so important data can be protected safely in secure. If users want to release authority, they can add software certification method. The IoT application can be implemented safely and flexibly. This is all the introduction today. Then we will show a small FIDO application demo. Here we will show the FIDO demo. Uh, you can see there is a USB stick with power bank. This USB, USB FIDO disk you stick applied to the programming skill today we introduced and there are two LED lights can show the fingerprint recognition is successful or fail let's start operation first uh, we power on the power bank then we can put the fingerprint on the fingerprint sensor surface if this is a right fingerprint, then it will show the green light. Then if we put wrong fingers on the fingerprint sensor surface, it will show fail. So it's a red light. Thanks for your watching. That's all the content I want to deliver to you. And, and welcome to raise any questions in the following Q&A section.